Hello and welcome to Z. In this video, we will discuss the most recent space news, including a significant Starship launch update. Astrobotics Peregrine Lander comes to Florida for integration into its Falcon rocket and rocket startup. NASA showcases development on their Viper Lunar Rover. As funding for Astra runs out, the space race is heating up. Based on reliable information, SpaceX is expected to attempt a second launch of the Starship Super Heavy rocket on Friday, November 17th. Elon Musk, in a post on Monday, stated that the company has received approval to launch, which should allow for a Friday launch. This is further supported by an FAA notice of restricted airspace over Brownsville, Texas, which was posted on November 14th and specifies a restriction starting at 1300 UTC and ending at 1539 UTC. Corresponding to 7 a.m. Starbase time until 9.30 a.m., that is Coordinated Universal Time. It is North America's Central Standard Time Zone. According to a schedule posted by SpaceX, Ground activity will start two hours prior to launch, and booster propellant loading will begin at one hour and 37 minutes. Check out our Discord server. The FAA notice places a red box around the area from Bac Chica Village straight out into the Gulf of Mexico. The altitude restriction is listed as from the surface up to unlimited, so that's definitely clearance to launch a rocket. Linked in the description for a live watch party featuring all of the current International Space Program activity on the moon NASA has said that their own lunar rover, Viper, is prepared for testing and final assembly. They also intend to broadcast the process of the volatiles they are using to investigate polar exploration. It feels strange to say that rover will be NASA's first independently autonomous rover to land on the moon, but I suppose that since most of the agency's prior missions involved sending humans there, they haven't needed to have a rover capable of operating on its own up until now. Rover was initially scheduled to land on the lunar surface in 2022. Viper was one of the many projects delayed by the pandemic and has only recently seen progress on its assembly just in time to keep its mission relevant for the overall Artemis program schedule. The main goal will be to find and analyze water ice samples both to more accurately survey the places where a more permanent human installation might be able to gather the water necessary for survival on the moon and also to catalog any potential useful substances below ground, which is where Viper gets the volatiles in its name in geology. Volatiles refer to chemicals that are dissolved in the structure of the rock or soil until exposed to surface water. Carbon dioxide is a common volatile, but the most recent subsurface samples that NASA has access to are the ones brought home by the Apollo missions of the late 1960s and early 1970s, which means that by now all traces of any potential underground water sources have long since evaporated, so Viper has been designed specifically to look for these signs. It is of course equipped with a 1M drill to accomplish this task, but also a neutron spectrometer system to sniff out hydrogen levels and a near-infrared volatile spectrometer system with a mass spectrometer. To back it up this way, the rover should be able to find large concentrations of hydrogen before even drilling and then analyze those samples without needing to send them back to Earth, but that's only the primary mission and Viper has another important trick up its sleeve. It's going to be able to operate during lunar night because it lacks any atmosphere the moon experiences wild temperature swings as it rotates into and out of the sunlight positive 120 degrees celsius in the day and then negative 130 degrees celsius at night each phase lasting roughly 14 earth days which is enough to freeze most electronics and mechanical parts solid this is why other lunar robots like the chinese u rovers have typically opted to, to shut down during the night to preserve power in the hopes of reactivating during the next day cycle to continue working or just opting to work as long as possible before dying like India's Chandrayaan-3 lander which recently completed its mission when it failed to wake up after its first night on the lunar surface back in September. Keeping a rover operating through this sort of intense cold would be very useful of course because aside from developing technology that would really help the rest of the space race it would allow allow robots like Viper to study phenomena on the moon. 
and other extremely cold bodies that we haven't been able to yet like the electrostatic current that scientists believe forms on the lunar surface at dawn and dusk which could cause a thin layer of dust to levitate briefly luckily Viper's original schedule included a lot of time for setbacks we are still almost a decade out from any serious attempt at establishing a more permanent human presence on the moon so there's still plenty of time left for Viper's mission to study the water in the south Pole, which is now scheduled for a November 2024 launch, this also gives NASA the unique opportunity to stream the assembly and testing of their rover, a clever bit of media work that NASA doesn't often take the opportunity to do the administration. Seems allergic to showing off their progress and the interesting technology they work with even though sometime with the public would be great for building some hype and landing some of the funding they need for their projects, so let's hope Viper Live. Streams are just the first of many new similar projects continuing the Lunalander news the astrobotic team is nearing the end of an almost 16-year journey. The Paragon is one of the original recipients of NASA's commercial lunar payload services contracts, a program designed to give NASA the redundancy they need while at the same time allowing commercial companies to compete for lucrative agency contracts to bring NASA experiments to the moon for them. Astrobotic has announced that their Paragon lander has survived its trip from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to Cape Canaveral, Florida, and is being fueled and integrated into the Centaur 5 upper stage vehicle that will take it to the moon. The same competition and W contracts included a number of other well-known brands, such as Intelligent Machines. Firefly, Draper, and Paragen are three firms that have distinct landers. The first is more practical in that. With some of the more current landers, you'll see that some companies have opted for fairly vertical designs that are intuitive machines. The human landing system vehicle of Starship Origins, which recently unveiled the Blue Moon, is designed similarly to the Nova C. There aren't many issues with this design, however, robotics opted for a wider, more stable design for their parachute, which may be difficult to load onto a rocket. Nevertheless, this is undoubtedly the most stable-looking parachute we've seen recently. Its low center of gravity and spade legs mean that it will roll much more slowly than the more top-heavy designs from the other companies. The second reason is that the first mission of Parag will carry out a number of critical NASA experiments and scientific payloads, most notably a small rover manufactured by Carnegie Mellon University and a number of standard spectrometers. However, the most crucial piece of equipment is the Terrain Relative Navigation Sensor, which is specifically intended to produce some of the first extremely detailed terrain mapping for use in subsequent landings. In essence, Paragen will land using satellite mapping data to make an educated guess, just as every lander has done since the Apollo missions completed their journey. However, after Paragon, the TRN data will be used to land Astrobotic's next lander, the Griffin, in 2024, which will grab even more TRN data, building a larger map for use with the Blue Origins lander soon after that and, of course, anyone else who needs it. In this way, Paragon is acting as a scout for those later missions, taking the risk of failing in the same manner as recent landing attempts like the Hakuto R and Luna 25 did, but if they are successful, landing will only get easier, and Ulo will be lending a hand to help Astrobotic reach the moon safely. This is the final reason Paragen is so different from every other CLP. Lunar landing mission Paragon will be launched on board the inaugural Vulcan rocket. The company's much-awaited heavy lift rocket has experienced multiple delays, but this is an opportunity to maintain their reputation as a reliable launch service provider and to finally retire their Atlas V and Delta IV rockets. Originally scheduled for 2019, a string of setbacks and technical difficulties forced it to be rescheduled for December 24th, Christmas Eve. From there, the Paragon will be transported to the moon by the Centaur V upper stage. Land by late January 2024 and begin collecting data for 8 to 10 days before running out of power during the lunar night. While optimistic, no one should be fooled. If the Vulcan launch is delayed or fails, the teams are ready to find a new launch date. If the Paragon doesn't land properly, doesn't turn on, or experiences any other issues, Astrobotic will use that data to prepare the Griffin lander. 
It's enough to say that both Ula and Astrobotic have a lot riding on this mission, but given their respective backgrounds in aerospace, it's unlikely that they'll need a Christmas miracle to pull off a textbook mission here. People, pay attention, Astra's time is running out. The spectacular losses of two fairly important weather tracking satellites provided a very embarrassing public look at a company that had only succeeded in two launches prior to attempting their ill-fated NASA contract. Some of you may recall Astra Space as the company that tried and failed to launch the NASA Tropics missions back in 2022. It's not like they only failed two or three launches in total across their launch vehicle prototypes named Rocket 1, 2, and 3. Before slowing down to concentrate on working out the kinks in their vehicles and designing their rockets, Astra attempted an astounding seven unsuccessful launches, including Tropics. For hardware since then, and really for the entirety of 2023, Astra has been struggling to court investors in order to keep the doors open and allow them to develop their next rocket, taking a couple of loans to do so things are getting so dire that the two founding members CEO Chris Kemp and CTO Dr. Adam London have offered to take the company private by purchasing its stock before loans come due on the 17th of November. But could that even save the company? There are a couple of things the two founders could still achieve with Astra, but they definitely have to make some harsh cuts to the scope of their operation, likely dropping their plans for designing a rocket altogether. The real moneymaker for Astra seems to be their satellite business. And the engines they've designed for their launch vehicles the rockets may not fly but by most accounts their kerosene powered engines are a solid bit of tech honestly stepping back and making some hard decisions here is likely the only way forwards for astra it's not easy to shake the sort of reputation that they gained from losing so many rockets it may be time to close the launch services branch of their company Check back with us every week for updates on everything related to the aerospace industry and interstellar exploration. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up as this greatly aids our efforts. You can also subscribe to the Space Race channel for more videos. Similar to this, we publish one long essay and one news update each week. If you'd like more, there are currently two more available for you to view.